In this section, I'm going to talk about a concept that is known as 6PE and also another one that is called 6VP. So let's start with 6PE. What is it? Why do we use 6PE? Let's say that I am running this service provider that has only IPv4 enabled on that. So I just write IPv4 here just to show that I only have IPv4 support in my service provider. And let's say that I have a customer, customer1, that runs IPv6 in its network. So I have IPv6 in the first branch and IPv6 in the second branch. What I need to do is to transfer data from branch1 to branch2 without affecting my network, without having to change everything in my network and add dual stack or IPv6 support in my routers. The only thing that I need here is to have IPv6 on router 1 and router 4. These are my provider edge routers that need to know about uh, this one. So, the things that I need for 6PE consists of these things. First of all, I need to have MPLS because I'm going to have labels on each packet that I send from one branch to another branch. The other thing that I need to have is IPv6 support on my provider edge. So, provider edge should have IPv6 support. And the other thing, uh, I need to have BGP and BGP is going to provide some labels. So BGP is going to have labels using send label command for each neighbor that I'm going to activate for this IPv6 address family. And also MPLS is going to add an extra, um, an extra label to the packets that is going to be sent to the other side. But for 6P, actually we don't need any VRF, so I'm not going to have any VRF. So from the previous section, I have some VRFs enabled on this interface. And this interface, I'm going to disable those VRFs. But next section, I'm going to start speak about 6VP, which is something better than 6P. As a matter of fact, right now you can see that I have multiple customers here. I don't want to mix their traffic. I don't want to mix the routing table, so 6VP is going to be the answer, like VPN v4 that we had. Before, we can add some VPN v6 uh, support to the uh, provider edge routers that we have here. But let's just start with the simpler uh, protocol, 6PE. And something that you should know about 6P is the protocol that is used to connect router 1 with C11 that is going to be my CE and PE. Uh, I can use any protocol to do this, but for 6VPE, the only protocol that I can use is going to be BGP and EIGRP. OSPF and RIP do not support those kind of connection between these two. Or I, I, I would have to go with static routes if necessary. Now before going on, what I need to do is this. I'm going to show you what I need to do and then go to configuration. Uh, first of all, I want to enable IPv6 on customer edges. Then I'm going to have a routing protocol. Let's say, for example, RIP. So I'm going to re enable RIP next generation here and I'm going to uh, inject every route that I have into RIP. Then I'm going to send those RIPs, uh, RIP uh, routes to router 1. So router 1 is going to have RIP as well. But I'm not going to, uh, and then I'm going to redistribute those routes into BGP, and BGP is going to carry the routes to the other side, then BGP is going to receive the routes here. So these are the steps that I'm going to do. I'm not going to redistribute the routes that I have received here into RIP. So this is not going to be an option. Why? It is possible, of course, you can do that, but better to inject uh, uh, just just a default route into customer edge. Why? Because I don't want to send every IPv6 route that I have into customer uh, routing table. I don't want to because of security reason or because uh, maybe customer doesn't need this thing. Customer is just a sub network here that needs to connect to me to reach to other parts of the network, maybe internet, maybe just the other branches. So it doesn't really need to have routes from the other side, it just needs to have a default route. But most of all, I prefer not to do that because of the security problems. And in next section, then I want to 
uh, explain 6VP, uh, this is not going to be an issue because each one of those branches are going to have their own VRFs and they are going to receive their own routes. So this is not going to be any problem here. So let's do this configuration here. First of all, like I said, I'm going to remove the VRF supports on router one. Let's go to customer one and uh, enable IPv6 there. This is customer one one. So I go to configuration mode. First of all, let's see IP interfaces that I have here. Then start by enabling IPv6 with IPv6 unicast routing and IPv6 step. And then I'm going to add interfaces, some IPv6 inter uh, address. Interface fast 0, 0. I'm going to have IPv6 address, uh, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, uh, 11, 1, 11 slash 64 and there is a problem with this IPv6 address actually okay and I'm going to enable rip under this so I just type IPv6 rip let's say the process name is RTR router to router that's a very simple thing enable and I'm going to do the same thing for the loopback interface interface loopback 11 and I'm going to have this address 11 11 11 11 and I'm going to enable rip on this so I did this and uh, this is enabled rip is received all those routes and almost everything is done except I need a default route so I just type IPv6 route colon colon slash zero colon colon zero um, and this is going to go colon colon slash zero of course this is gonna go to one two three four eleven one one and hit enter this is my default route that I just configured so everything is going to be sent to rather one I'm going to do the same thing on the other customer edge so I just go here show IP interface brief IPv6 unicast routing IPv6 CEF and now under interface fast 0 0 IPv6 address is gonna be 1 2 3 4 14 4 14 slash 64 and also here I'm going to use rip so IPv6 rip rtr enable and interface loopback uh what is the loopback name 12. And i'm going to have 12 12 everything should be 12 here and this one is going to be 12 as well and also rip is going to be enabled and also again i need a default route ipv6 route is going to be colon colon slash zero goes to 1, 2, 3, 4, 14, 4, 4, which is router 4's address. So everything is done here on customer edge routers. Let's go to router 1. Like I said, I want to show the running config of interface fast 1.0. This is the interface that is connected to my customer. And like I said, I don't need to have VRF. I can have, but next session, I'm going to speak about that. What I want to do is to disable this and then I'm going to enable the IP address here. So I go here, first of all, IPv6 unicast routing, IPv6 CEF, these are good practices. And then I'm going to go to interface fast10 and type these commands and then add IPv6 address 1234. 14, no, 14, 11, 1, 1, slash 64, and I'm going to have ripNJ here, so IPv6 rip, uh, let's say the process name is going to be anything, it doesn't have to be the same as the other one, because this is locally significant, but let's say RTR is a simple thing that I just type here. This means that if I show IPv6 route, now I should have received everything, and exactly I have. 
and I should be able to ping the other side. So if I try to ping here, this ping is successful. And also the same configuration. I'm going to do the same configuration on Rutherford. So I just go here, uh, show run interface pass 10, which is connected to customer one's um, edge rather. And I'm going to disable VRF forward in here. So interface pass 10. Oh, first of all, I, I forgot to enable IPv6, of course. Unicast routing and IPv6 CEF and then go to interface pass 10 and do this and also IPv6 address which is going to be 1234 14 4 4 slash 64 and again I'm going to have rip here IPv6 rip RTR enable which means that I should have received the uh, routes from second branch of customer one IPv6 route shows me that I have and I should be able to ping this so if I try to do a ping this should work of course which doesn't and of course that's because I have mistyped the address it is 12 actually yes it is working just fine now the next part the next part comes here i'm going to inject these routes into bgp bgp is going to carry this to the other pe other pe is going to receive it this means that now the pe knows about other branch and this pe is going to know about the other branch so everything is going to be okay what I need to have is to enable address family under BGP and also I'm going to enable these two routers as BGP neighbors to have IPv6 send label enabled. So let's do that. I'm going to go to router for first, show run, section router BGP tells me that I have a neighborship with router 1 right now. So I just type router bgp123 and I'm going to have an address family ipv6 without a VPN of course without VRF support that's okay because I don't want to have VRF right now this is just 6p not 6vp so I'm going to have this neighbor activated here and also I'm going to have send label enabled so this is send label the two things that I did here now I need to redistribute some routes from RIP RTR. Also I need to redistribute connected networks. Why? Because this link should be in BGP uh, to enable uh, IPv6, uh, of, of course IPv6 address that I have here. It should be injected into BGP so that the other side knows about that. Uh, the only interface that I am adding IPv6 at this is going to be this. But this interface is going to receive a funny kind of IPv6 at this, which, are, which I'm going to show you in a minute. So let's do the same thing on the other side. You see that I don't need to redistribute routes in, back into RIP because I just gave rather uh, the, the, the customers some default route. So let's go to router 1 show run section rather bgp and this is the bgp configuration rather bgp one two three and under address family ipv6 without any vrf i'm going to activate this neighbor and i'm going to make it send some labels send label also the same redistribution mechanism that i had RTR also redistribute connected now I should be able to ping uh, branches from each other so let's go to customer 11 and I'm going to do a ping to let's say 1 2 3 4 11 11 11 and you can see the ping is successful the same thing uh, should happen on the other side if I go to customer one two oh of course so this this should have been done on the other side sorry sorry I go to customer one two 
I'm paying customer one one and you can see it says unreachable which is funny let's see why let's go to router 4 and check the routing table show IPv6 routing table and you can see that I have 1 2 3 4 11 11 and here I try to ping 1 2 3 4 11 11 double colon oh no everything is just fine I guess there was just something like a mistype or I should have waited some for some minutes uh, some seconds to uh, see the convergence and everything should be fine and if I try to trace the other side what happens let's see the result of the trace route you can see that it goes to router 4 from router 4 it goes to router 3 but with a weird kind of address you can see that everything is 0000, 0, 0, 0. then I have uh, 1111 uh, for 16 bits and after that you can see that I have a, an IP uh, v4 address attached to this IPv6 address that I just have. And this is kind of an address that is res reserved or reserved for 6PE. And then it goes to the other side and I receive everything here. And if I do the same trace on router 4, I can see the labels that is used to reach to the other side. So if I try to do the trace here, you can see that again the same address mechanism is used here but I have some MPLS labels actually two labels one of them is fixed this is 32 which is the BGP label that is added to each packet that goes to the other side but on the other hand we have a second label that is 22 for the first hop 21 for the second hop and these are the MPLS label that is switched on every uh, LSP that we have uh, LSR that we have inside our network. Of course, you can see that we have penultimate hop popping in the uh, penultimate rudder in my network, and also I have uh, label popping in the last rudder that is going to be rudder one, which rips the label and sends the packet naked to uh, to the customer. Okay, this is the configuration that you needed to know about 6PE. Now, like I said, 6VP is going to give me more security, more segregation between the uh, VRFs and everything that I had before. So I'm going to I'm going to show you this in the next section.